a thin uniform rod bent. A thin uniform rod of mass capital M and length L capital L is bent at its center so that the two segments are now perpendicular to each other. Find the moment of inertia about an axis perpendicular to its plane and passing through part A the point where the two segments meet and point B the midpoint of the line connecting its two ends. So you can see this has been bent. I put the origin uh, at the joint uh, here. So we would like to know uh, the moment of inertia with respect to this uh, joint, a, a rotation axis that goes perpendicular to the plane through this joint and also uh, in the middle of the line that is connecting the two ends of the two segments. All right. Um, now this is a one-dimensional object so we will uh, talk about a linear mass density so mass density we call lambda it's the total mass m capital m divided by the total length capital l so we're assuming a uniform mass distribution it's a uniform uh, rod and to calculate the moment of inertia with respect to the origin i0 it's the integral r square dm uh, we need to know at a distance x from the origin what is the mass of a mass element so if we are at position x dm will be equal to the mass density linear mass density lambda times the length of this element dx so um, this will be integral from 0 to L over 2, that's going on the x-axis, uh, x squared lambda dx, and then we have a portion also on the y-axis. So if we are at a distance y, the mass element will have a mass lambda dy, and y will go from 0 to L over 2. So this is integral 0 to L over 2, y squared, r squared dm lambda dy is our dm so we obtain because these integrals are basically the same uh, whether it's x or y it's the same so we have twice the same integral 2 lambda uh, x cubed divided by 3 x cubed divided by 3 and we go from uh, 0 to L over 2, the same integrals. So this gives us 2 lambda uh, L cube divided by 8, and we have also a 3 here, 3 times 8. Now this 2 will make this 8, uh, 4. So we have lambda L cube over 12 lambda l cube over 12. So the answer we're looking for in part A is lambda, which is capital M divided by L, multiplied with l cube over 12. l cube over 12. So this gives us capital M capital L square over 12 as our final answer for this part of the problem capital m l square over 12. all right so this was part a of the problem now <clears throat> if we look at the the line that is connecting the two ends midpoint of the line connecting its two ends uh, we can see that the center of mass uh, for this distribution will be right uh, here at a distance L over 4 on the x-axis and L over 4 on the y-axis. The center of mass location, R center of mass, is uh, basically uh, 
L over 8 I hat plus L over 8 J hat. Okay, so this is L over 4 and we should be right in the middle here. So this will be L over 8 I hat, L over 8 J hat. So the distance between the center of mass and the uh, axis of interest here is d square, which is equal to the uh, r center of mass uh, magnitude square. So this will be uh, L square over uh, 64 plus L square over 64, x component and y component square, which is L squared over 32. So if I look at the uh, moment of inertia I calculated at the joint point for a rotation axis that goes through the, the joint point, it's basically using the parallel axis theorem, the moment of inertia with respect to center of mass plus m d square, uh, which is i center of mass plus uh, the distance between uh, these two is this d squared, which is um, ml squared over 32. The answer I found was ml squared over 12 in part A. So I find that the moment of inertia for the center of mass rotation axis will be ml squared 1 over 12 minus 1 over 32, which is ml squared <coughs> so we have to um, multiply uh, this one by uh, 8 and this one by 3 so 8 over 96 minus 3 over 96 96 is our common denominator. So this gives us 5ml squared divided by 96 for I center of mass. But using the same logic, you can see that uh, this point is symmetric with respect to the center of mass. It's also at a distance d from the center of mass. So I center of mass plus uh, md squared will be the moment of inertia at uh, the midpoint of the line connecting to its two ends. So it will be I m, which will be the same answer. So 5 ml squared over 96 plus ml squared over 32, which is 8 ml squared over 96. And the same answer, ml squared over 12. So we notice that the uh, moment of inertia with respect to the joint point of the two segments and for the moment of inertia connecting uh, the midpoint of the line connecting the two ends, they're both equal to I center of mass plus MD square. The same answer is obtained. So this was our answer to part B. Okay, now to summarize, we have a uniform rod so that it has a mass density capital M over L that has been bent at its center. The two segments are perpendicular to each other. We want to know the moment of inertia for an axis perpendicular to the plane passing through the joint point. So that is integral R squared dm. So if we are at a distance x on the x-axis, dm is lambda dx. At a distance y on the y-axis, dm is lambda dy. The same integral is performed between 0 and L over 2, x squared lambda dx, y squared lambda dy. So lambda dy is and lambda dx is substituted for dm. So dm is lambda dx or uh, dm is lambda dy for these two segments. 
So it's the same integral we're performing twice. So it's 2 lambda x cubed over 3, 0 to L over 2. We obtain our answer to part A by substituting for lambda m over L, ml squared over 12. Then we notice that the center of mass of this uh, line would be uh, in the midpoint of the two lines connecting the centers of the two segments. That would be at a location uh, L over 8 on the x-axis and L over 8 on the y-axis. Um, so our center of mass is uh, like that. So you can see that this is at a distance d from the, the joint point. It's also at a distance d from the midpoint of the line connecting the two ends. So the answer for uh, part A that we have obtained can be uh, also found using the parallel axis theorem. So this is my parallel axis theorem. Uh, because I have the same distance, I O is I center of mass plus MD square. I M is also I center of mass plus MD square. And indeed, I have verified that I obtained the same answer ML squared over 12.